Welcome back everyone to part two of making an aluminum axe head. On the agenda for this video is cleaning up the cast from part one. I'll clean up the slits um, and then from there I'll cut down to size the steel that I'm using for the tip in the rear and if time allows I'll heat treat it too. So I don't know how far I'll get but that's what I want to try to accomplish for this video. So I'm going to be cleaning up this axe head. I'm going to start by cutting off these chunks of the cast that didn't quite fill up. So at this point, I'm just cleaning up the slot at the tip here. I already got the back one done. It's turning out to be really slow tasking work. I'm making sure that I keep my file vertical here uh, so I don't remove any material that I want to keep. You're just having to be really careful. And this aluminum is so soft that it gums up the file real easy. So every now and again you just got to pick off the big pieces because if you don't, you really, you're not filing, you're just scratching the material because that aluminum gets in between the teeth of the file and the material you're trying to, to file and you just end up scratching the surface rather than you know removing material but filing it does build character or so they say I got the slots ground out so that they fit the steel pretty well, they fit pretty snug. So next I'm gonna go in and buff the surface. I got these 120 grit stick-ons um, and, and I'm just gonna try to smooth out the surface a little bit. Got a lot of air bubbles that were trapped in the, the cast. Try to get rid of some of them. Um, just touch up the spots I wasn't able to get with the file. I got the tip and the rear rough cut, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these in uh, to the axe, just use some super glue just so it's temporary, so that I can file um, and just kind of get the contour of the axe head. Uh, and then from there, I'll hit it with a little heat, that'll break the super glue bond, and I'll take these out and I'll go ahead and I'll sharpen the tip. Here's the back plate that I'm going to weld up to the back plate slit, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm going to try, if I can just see about heating this up, just bend it over, put some kale wool in here to protect my vise, and then also so the heat doesn't dissipate through my vise. Maybe I can get this red hot and just bend it ever so slightly so it fits that back contour of the axe head. Let's see if it works. I'm going to weld up the back plate now. This is my second attempt. First attempt did not go so well. My welder, it's got major wire feeding issues. It's a MIG. And uh, I really just need a new welder. But you may be able to see I cut some slots in here in between the two pieces of the back plate. And the idea is to put a bead of weld right in those slots that way it doesn't stick out too far and I'm still able to put it in the, the back of the axe head. Got the back plate welded, got it ground. I think this one's gonna work, it's holding pretty well. Uh, also, I got the front here, got that ground. So I'm ready to start grinding the bevels. Uh, now, a really good way to mark the center line to grind the bevels 
if you don't have the expensive perfectly flat granite top and the uh, the scriber a good way to do this is to actually scribe it with a drill bit that's the same thickness as the material so I'm sitting at just about a fifth of an inch that's pretty close let me see if I can find one a little closer Okay, I'm ready to drill the holes. Uh, I scribed the lines, measured in 5 8 of an inch from both sides, and marked it. Uh, you can see I already drilled one hole, but I had an issue whenever I drilled down with the drill press, it forced this steel piece out. So I had to go ahead and glue this piece to the axe head, um, so this way the steel won't slide out whenever I push down with the drill press. So I'm ready to drill, doing the same thing over here. Um, I'm trying to intersect the steel right at the tip so I can still grip onto the steel without it coming out um, but it also supports the downward impact of the axe head whenever I'm using it. So this is a really big point because uh, I really only have one try at this. If I mess up here then I've wasted a lot of time for nothing. You got the pinholes all drilled up now. Everything looks good on this side and uh oh. Yeah so this thing rocked whenever I had it in the drill press and that caused this hole to be drilled sideways. So that's an issue, nothing I can really do about it at this point, I mean the hole's already drilled. But other than that one, it all went pretty well. Um, I've got these holes drilled just like I wanted them, where they'll hold the pin in. Um, and so the pin will be holding the back plate in, and then also I'll be epoxying these to the axe head. So hopefully uh, the epoxy will be strong enough in combination with the pins to hold everything together. This front piece came out real good. The pins, perfect placement. Yeah, so other than that one hole that was drilled sideways, I think the pin holes are going to be great. Um, it's a real tight fit. Should keep the thing together real nice. Shouldn't have any issues with that whatsoever. That's going to be it for part two of this video. This turned out to be a really fun project, taking me a long time to do each one of these steps, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end for the final product. Um, it, it's always just fun to challenge yourself and push yourself, even when it's something that might be outside of your comfort zone. So that's definitely been this project for me. I've learned a lot. Um, I've had a lot of issues, but having to overcome and find ways to fix the problems that I have, it's just all part of the process, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. So thanks for watching and subscribe.